I'm glad you could make it. I am currently traveling with my parents. Traveling is a really loose term. We're on like a vacation, all-inclusive vibes in the Dominican. My mom saw a travel Friday deal and was like, we've been going on a trip as a family in a really long time. Why don't we go? So here I am, a 25-year-old on technically March break, spring break with my parents. Hear me out, best trip I've ever been on. Nothing better than spending time with just me and my parents doing literally nothing but reading. But think of something more connected, not the word I want, better suited than sitting on the beach for a week and reading romance. So we are going to be reading romance for a week here. I was originally gonna let you guys choose what I was gonna read, but obviously the very first story that I posted, which was between Addicted to You and Done and Dusted, obviously Instagram went down for the whole day. Instagram was down across the board. I could not even ask Rachel to check it and see what it was at because I thought it was like a here thing, just down across the board. It was 50-50 every time I checked it before then, not helpful. So we are definitely gonna start with either Addicted to You or Done and Dusted. These are the two starting options. I brought so many books and unnecessary inexplicable amount like maybe nine or ten so we have options we're gonna read romance for a week here I'm gonna bring you guys along I have not had uninterrupted reading time in what feels like months so we're gonna do a week of reading romance and see where that gets us and hopefully get a tan saying it now forewarning right freaking now the humidity and extensions doesn't work. We're gonna decide right now as a team to just like turn a blind eye to what my hair looks like this entire week because it's gonna be gonna be quite tragic. I think the entire thing will be quite tragic being in this much humidity. Blinders on, we're talking about books, period. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get into our week of reading romance. <laughs> right now this is exhibit exhibit a i have about like 50 pages left in this something like that i'm on page 311 chapter 29 it's been an easy read it's very easy to just like mindlessly read it hear me out hear me out i'm so sorry i don't love it i don't i don't love it thus far i feel like i can understand where the hype comes from like I, there's like 11 of them aren't there i also like meeting the sisters and like kind of have an idea of like where the future books are gonna go. Are they all addicted to something or was addicted just the beginning and then the Callaway sister is just non-addictive romance? I don't know. Lily reads a little bit in my brain. I don't know how to word this in like a correct way. Lily reads in my brain a little bit too much like a regular humility character. I got so many DMs saying like I can't wait for you to experience the lit hail like you're gonna love him you're gonna I don't love them. No, hear me out. I love BJ. I loved BJ. And we all know BJ is a toxic king. There's a difference between toxic and destructive. Low reads destructive for me. I understand they're both hurting each other. I do. It's just predictable a little bit. It's a little bit far-fetched at the same time. Do you know what I mean? I never even explained what this book is about, did I? Wow, okay. Quick reaper. Basically, we're following Lily and Lo, which they both come from like Fortune 500 families, like the richest families in the world, billionaires. And they both have an addiction. He has an addiction to drinking and she has an addiction to sex. So to keep their family like off their backs, they pretended that they were dating. She could quote and find men and he could 
drink his life away. That's worked for a really long time. But these fake feelings and them living together all throughout college and them being best friends forever, it's not feeling so fake anymore. And things happen from there. Is that a good explanation? I have like 50 pages left in this. I feel like the 50 pages need to really go somewhere. It's just reading a little bit slow and boring. It's like, honestly, like this much, but like a little bit, you know? I want to like believe in them as a couple. It just feels like kind of copy paste. I don't know. I usually like when a romance is on like an interesting backdrop. Like I love Ali Hazel like, because it's like a typical trope romance but they're in a different situation i don't know if i just can't get behind the addiction i feel like maybe we're supposed to hate them in this one if they get the help that's where i was going with the bj thing i love bj but we love bj because he he does the work a little bit at least some work is accomplished i feel like if i saw work accomplished in these two i would appreciate the story and them more yeah it's fine it's good it's good it's like a very easy study keeping me entertained it's a little bit slow i don't know how i feel about it yet i do like their writing a lot i do i like i like them i have like 50 pages Left. We're gonna read these 50 pages and then we'll see. I just feel like I'm not getting what I thought I was gonna get from it for it being like everyone and their mom's favorite book in the entire freaking world. Is it people's favorite books or did they all just read it? pages 50 pages to 50 pages pages to. they did the damn thing the plot was plotting the idea that literally anyone can hear me right now makes me want to crawl outside of my skin this is why i do this at home alone in my bedroom um addicted to you finished her last night can i just say the last 50 pages did the damn thing okay we got plot in the last 50 pages i like feel like i jinxed myself because i literally only had 50 pages left when i last talked to you and i was kind of like meh about it but then the last 50 pages i was like mm. I kind of get it. I kind of get the hype. Did I immediately go online and order the second book? Yes. Did I wake up this morning and I wasn't thinking about it at all? Also, yes. So I don't know how I'm feeling about it. I feel like it's gonna get good. From what I've gathered, it moves on to be like just about the Callaway sisters. It's very like the whole squad gets together from what I've gathered. But I think that there's no more like addictions after we go through the Addicted series with Lo and Lo. I was just saying Lauren and Lily. I'm like so torn between giving it like a 3.75 and a four. Like all the way through my notes, everything I thought about it, like the first 75%, 3.75. Easy read, enjoyable, not my favorite thing I've ever read. Wasn't totally invested, didn't totally believe in them, but like an enjoyable read. I really like their writing in this. Like I do enjoy it. I annotated quite a bit of this book, which is hard to do while sitting on the beach. And this book now is beat from sitting on my sweaty thighs, like covers are, I don't wanna talk about it. The last 50, 75 pages, 50, 55 pages, 4.25, like really good. The plot was plotting. I did guess the big twist, like I wrote, I'm not gonna show you in case you read it, but I like wrote in the side of all the pages, the twist that I thought was coming. It came, it happened, was a good twist, was a very good twist. And I understand how it's setting up for further in the series. I also like kind of now wanna read about Rose and Daisy, but I know I have to finish the three in the addicted series first. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's like a solid 3.85, never given a book that rating. It's not solid. It's right in between 3.75 and four. Thinking because I had rated a lot of books four like previous to this, I was looking at my Goodreads, like Where's Molly was a four. The Fake Mate was a four. Like I think I enjoyed The Fake Mate more. I can see how people are super invested in this series. I can see how I might get super invested in this series. As it stands right now, it was good. I Tell me if I'm missing the hype and I need to read on because I will read on. I probably will read on. I'm at least going to finish the three books. But I also really want to know about Rose and Daisy. Not entirely sure what I'm thinking in regards to that. It was good. I still recommend reading it the writing was really good i just don't know if i totally believe in their addiction it's like they read almost too much like a typical main character in a romance as opposed to like extremely addicted people but like also addiction shows up in so many forms it's a new day and i think i am gonna pick up happily never after by lynn painter i think this is not even totally out yet doesn't it come out on like march 12th it's like the sixth today right now i did get it in my book of the month box which by the way this isn't sponsored but you can use the code chirp to get your first book for 9.99 just saying just helping a gal out because book of the month is my whole personality. I love them with my whole heart. This is a hardback. It doesn't matter what happens to the naked hardback when I'm like in the sand and on the beach and it's covered in sunscreen because I get to cover it up. I feel like that's the right way to go. I really liked better than the movies, but it read really YA for me. This one feels more adult because they are adult. We're basically following Sophie and Max and Sophie is set to marry this guy, but she found out that he's cheated on her again because obviously apparently he cheats on her a lot, but she can't call it the wedding because her future father-in-law is actually her dad's cutthroat fucking boss. So she can't just be like, I'm out of here because her dad might lose his job. Not ideal. So she hires Max the objector 
producer whose job is literally to go to weddings and object because if you didn't know if somebody objects at your wedding you can't get married that day i don't know if it's a law thing but you can't they end up striking up from what i can tell a very unlikely friendship and she ends up objecting with him and it's like the most fun apparently she's had in years apparently like she's a real human that's what the synopsis says and because it's Lynn painter and it's classified as a romance i'm assuming we go on from there. Two skeptics falling in love is the vibes that I'm getting. Unlikely friendship. So we're going to start this today because this just feels like the right move. And also reading my book of the month book for March in the month of March feels like productive in a way that I can't explain. The 75 unread books on my TBR, the 30 books that I bought last week. Don't worry about them. I was making a funny face with my eyes, but you literally can't see them because I have sunglasses on. My poor little camera in the sun is like 110 degrees. <laughs> never thought I would hear Lin Ping to say this, the like romance, rom com -y, meet cute queen, because it's a croc, the notion of the one, one person you're meant to spend your entire life with happily together until you're dead, that doesn't even make sense, it's a myth, and the reality is that every single human has the potential to cheat if put in the right circumstances. Where is Lin Painter and what have you done with her? I have no friends who just sit and stare at the camera all day. Okay, you don't have to knock me when I'm down. 125,000. <laughs> Not all of us can be social like you. You really just said, let me just go straight for your heart. <laughs> your hair is frizzy. Fuck you. <laughs> all of these little Taylor Swift references are feeding my soul. After, I was just say the Happily Never After playlist, like Happily Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. Haven't even read it. We are about halfway through Happily Never After now. I love her. She did get caught in the rain yesterday. She's not like, she's not in the best shape. We forgive her because the content, so good. This is only the second book I've ever read by Lynn Painter and I only read better than the movies and I found it extremely YA. It was really good. I liked it, but it just like, it would not be my pick to read every single time. I just feel as a 20 something year old, it has to be so good for me to enjoy reading about high schoolers at this point in my life. Why is it doing? that it feels weird it like won't close it's probably the rain i am enjoying this so much so far her writing is giving me everything the main character in this sophie is giving me very much ali hazelwood female main character energy which i feel like i've been reading a lot that i've been comparing ali hazelwood main character energy to people but they're just funny like sophie is funny don't get me wrong if you were to take her out and make her a real person a little cringy a little a little tiny bit cringy in this book she's funny her banter is so good her emotions her drive everything so good if you ever told me that i would be reading a lynn painter book where the main character is a cynic who does not believe in love i would be shocked because the only thing i've ever read by her is better than the movies where like love is everything and i feel like that's a premise of a lot of her books but sophie's whole thing in this is like true love is a marketing ploy and it's not real and max our objector is kind of like i don't know if i agree with you but i love your energy love your energy so i'm just gonna say yes and now they're objecting together it's so good i'm flying through it i feel like i'm gonna read this really fast famous last words i feel like whenever i say that i don't read it very fast reading in the sun when you're like melting hard i forgot how hard it was i feel like i'm reading like a word a minute because that's how fast my brain is processing but also i refuse to give up the sun and not get the tan because it's negative 10 degrees at home so i probably won't talk to you until we finish this i think reading this after reading addicted to you like i'm enjoying the reading experience of reading this more like i think 
I was gonna say I think I like funny books more, but no I don't. I love trauma. I don't know. Apparently the Addicted To series gets better the second and third book. I'm gonna read on. It was good. I liked Lily and Lo. I don't know, I'm talking about it again. I feel like I'm like personally attacking people for not like loving it out of the gate because so many people said I would love it out of the gate. And I feel weird about the fact that I don't necessarily love it right out of the gate. I'm not obsessed yet. This, however, standalone energy, I'm enjoying it more. But I could also see myself giving this four because it's not like groundbreaking. It's really good, but it's like, I'm not gonna tattoo it on my forehead, but then Addicted To You is definitely a 3.75. I don't know. We'll see where everything lands. I'm enjoying this a lot. We'll see where it goes. Lim Painter, I think you've won me over this, however, loving so far. P.S. All of the Taylor Swift references in this, feeding my soul. have a tan line, burn line, on my legs from where I hold my book reading in the sun. I don't. But if I did, I wouldn't want to talk about it, okay? <laughs> Happily Never After by Lynn Painter, done and done. I've done that twice now where I've said done and dusted, like I've done it. Like that is a phrase I use in my real life, but I think I'm going to read done and dusted next. So we're not going to say that. Is completed. Checked off the list. Done. Can I just say that my parents have absolutely no respect for books? My mom, I let her borrow my copy of The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. I haven't even read it yet. I let her borrow it and tell me why that book looks like it's been through a rainstorm. If I told you that it had been in a washing machine, you would believe me. She read it for two days. She's a fast reader. That's all it took her to read it. It doesn't even look like a book anymore. She's like one of the wrap it around and fold it. Readers, but not like a cutesy little wrap, like a like a snap the spine wrap around. And then the dust jacket for this, my dad just put his big ass book on top of it and squashed it. I feel very unseen in these in these streets today. So cute, so good, so cute. I think I'm officially a Lynn Painter converted lover, okay? Loved it. It did what you thought it was gonna do. There was a moment that I almost cried, which is a good tell in a book. I love, I love crying. I hate crying in real life. Love crying in books. It ended up not being sad, so I didn't cry, but the tears, they were, they were prickling. It was coming, which shows me that I was attached to these characters. They felt like real goddamn human beings to me, okay? Sophie and Max are, are, they're imprinted on my heart. A lot of it. I loved the premise of this. Like, tell me why I have never read a romance about an objector because it's a strange concept. That's why it was so good. The whole premise, them being friends that objected together and like they can just be friends because Sophie's like, fuck love. I don't believe in it. It's not real. It's a marketing ploy. It was such a good backdrop for this to take over on. Also, Max being the one that like really did still believe in love. Love that. I feel like it's usually you get like a male grumpy. This isn't really grumpy at Sunshine because she was goddamn a ray of sunshine. She was so fun. She was grumpy about love, which I feel like made it more likable. I mean, I don't have this opinion, but I find a lot of people have the opinion that Grumpy X Sunshine, where the females are grumpy, they find the female main character unlikable, which why are we putting fictional women up to the standards of having absolutely no flaws? I couldn't tell you, but I feel like everyone would love this book. Even the people that don't like Grumpy Sunshine, where the female is grumpy. It was very cute. It was very good. I think I'm going to settle. I think I'm going to set. I think it's a 4.5. I loved it. I'm getting to the end and they were like mentioning things in the beginning. I felt like I'd gone on a whole whirlwind. Like I felt like so much had happened. It felt like such a big story, such a big plot, but I got to the end and I was like, I haven't been reading for that long. Like it feels like big and it feels like a lot has happened, but I haven't been like, oh my God, this is so long. It felt longer than it was in a good way. It felt like she packed it all in. Like nothing in here was fluff. It like, it was all impactful. Every single situation, moment, scenario, it played into something bigger. I loved it. I thought it was very well done. I am definitely going to be reading more Lynn Painter, which after reading better than the movies, I was kind of like, there are so many books I want to read. There are so many authors I want to read. Kind of good to not read more. This changed my mind. I loved this. I loved this. It made me feel the same things that Breeding Ellie Hazelwood gives me. And <laughs> I'm a Ellie Hazelwood stan across the board. I don't know why. I don't even really like stan. Love how she writes. And she's joining this fan club, okay? For like cutesy little rom-com vibes. Because I'm not a huge cutesy little rom-com girl. I like some suspense. I like some big plot. This, however, this could change my mind. We're going to go into Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. If you remember, I did a poll at the beginning of this video. Asking if I should read this or Addicted to you. I don't know why I said that like that. And Instagram crash it came back up the next day or like that night y'all couldn't even decide it was 49.51 for done and dusted so i picked wrong by one percent and i'm so 
still reading it, but y'all can decide either. There was like over 600 votes either way. So I feel like we just all want to see both of these get read. So this is the one we're going to pick up next. QC Little Small Town Cowboy Spacey Romance. It's a lot of words to describe a book. Correct though. I think that's how you would describe it, right? So many people love this. The hype was all last summer and I never had it and I never read it. So it's time. It's just time. We're not going to talk about the fact that my skin matches my hair. I'm burnt. I am burnt. And I'm usually, I'm usually good about it. I felt myself burning, but I had 30 pages left and I was like, just commit to the bit. And I already regret it. I already regret it. <laughs> Ironically, read the first 25 pages of this with a country accent in my own head. Like, I wasn't jealous. I couldn't be jealous. I never said it was good. I never said it was good. <laughs> absolutely fed up with my hair when it goes up in a ponytail because me in a ponytail egg absolute egg i need to dab with my face that's the state that we are in i'm about like 100 pages into done and dusted and it is 110 percent giving me my chestnut springs country cowboy romance fix i have not read any country cowboy romances other than chestnut springs so that is why i'm comparing it to that and i don't want to read hopeless and have chestnut springs be done i've also heard it's not everyone's favorite disregard so cute it's so much more Country, country. I just need to stop with the country accent. I can't do it. It's not good. In my head, it's so good. So clear, so precise. And then I say it out loud and it's like country. I'm from Ontario, Canada. Pipe down, miss girl. This is so much more country than I was anticipating. Like in a good way. It's good. It's very country. Very cowboy romance. Like I feel like with Chestnut Springs, I, maybe it's because Chestnut Springs is Canadian country. And like I know Canadian country. I don't really know Southern US country. I'm doing a little bit of country accent. Stop. Literally stop. So far, the writing is super good. It's super good. It's so super good. I'm delusional. So far the writing is really good. Like I'm really enjoying it. I'm flying through it really quickly. The font in here is literally massive and like the margins are huge. Like I feel like I'm literally gonna fly through this. Famous last words. I need to stop saying that. But I read the first 100 pages like last night after finishing. Happily never after. So that's a pretty good sign. We're basically following Clementine, Emmy, because who names their daughter after a fruit? Clearly the writers. I think it's cute. And then Luke Brooks, which is her older brother's best friend. <laughs> Emmy's like first goal in life was to get the fuck away from Meadowlark, the town that they grew up in. She was like done with the small town is. She was Meadowlark's sweetheart. The writer family's known there, you know? And she rode horses competitively. Don't totally understand that, but she was on like the circuit. Same as Rhett, Rhett in Flawless. They were on the country circuit doing professional horse riding. Don't totally understand what she does. She fell off a horse and she had a big injury and now she's scared to get on a horse. She hated her boyfriend in Denver. So she called her best friend Teddy and was like, fuck this. I need to leave tonight. I'm leaving a letter. I'm sending my horse back home. You need to come pick me up right now. We're going. And she left Denver and she went back home. And on the very first night, she goes to the dingy bar in the small town that they always go to, which it was iconic that Devil's Boot was never named on the bar. There was just a trident and a boot and everybody just knew what it meant. It's giving very much cutesy small town. As soon as she gets there, a song starts playing, a Clementine song that everybody knows, Clementine's Sweetheart. It was like the running joke in the town, the running joke with the littlest rider. And she knows exactly who it is immediately, Luke Brooks, her brother's best friend, the annoying, irresponsible fuck up that is her brother's best friend. Her brother has now had a child and because Luke is technically, Luke has been appointed as his uncle, he's making a better name for himself. And the second he sees her, he's like, Holy fuck, that is my best friend's little sister. Why am I jealous that she's talking to another guy that's not allowed? It's giving what it needs to give. It's like a bajillion degrees outside today, even hotter than it's been. So we'll see how much I can actually read. Does anybody else have trouble reading like in the heat? Don't talk about the burn. Don't talk about the burn. I was wearing sunscreen. Don't talk about the burn. I'm gonna hide a little bit today. Does anybody else find reading in the heat? Like, I feel like my brain is running at a, I was gonna say a tortoise's speed. I mean, that's not wrong. At a turtle's speed. Like my brain is like, 
and then she whoa what did that say it's a problem really good it's a perfect summer read because nothing's that important in a good way like if i miss a chapter i don't think it'll matter that much kind of bad but in a good way in an enjoyable watching your cover tv show when you're sick kind of way i don't think any of that is english i've not caffeine in a week excuse me <laughs> now obviously you can tell you can tell i'm very clearly not on the beach anymore done and dusted is in fact done and dusted i had to i had to it was low hanging fruit so sorry apologies now done done and dusted finished it the very last day of the trip but if you can tell from the like last 22 seconds i don't know why i chose that number of b-roll that you just watched i didn't hair bun i didn't need to be on camera okay no me in any of that footage official opinions on done and dusted are in big fan i think i'm gonna settle on giving this like a four 4.25 i feel like 4.25 I'm still kind of thinking about them and it gave me very much the same feelings as Chestnut Springs and that series like is summer romance to me I still think I'm a Chestnut Springs first but like this is a very 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 close second for interconnected standalone what will be a larger series I will say the story reads a little bit copy paste chestnut springs which don't hear me i would say don't hear me out don't hear me out honestly up to you don't have to listen if you don't want to it's totally on your prerogative there's a lot a lot of similarities like it's not the exact same in any way shape or form i don't think it's truly like a copy and paste but like we got the single father where the mother passed away of a family of siblings who the whole interconnected standalone series is going to circle their mother passed away young and then we have this like wise older who kind of always know what's going on father kind of very similar vibes i will say i'm not mad about it it didn't feel copy paste in a bad way it felt copy paste in a if you love chestnut springs you'll also probably really love this emmy and luke's relationship felt really big it felt very full i like that the story had like a real overarching theme like there was like something in emmy like a thing going on with emmy that needed to be accomplished in her accomplishing that and getting over what has happened to her she's like opened herself up and realized a lot about herself which made it possible for a relationship to happen i liked watching and like hearing in Luke's perspective how he went from like being this fuck boy and then he got his life together and he tried really hard to get his life together he owns his bar he's working really hard but he always kind of sees himself as a fuck up so he's like I'm not gonna fall in love because like I just would never be good enough for any woman let alone Emmy my like best friend baby sister who we protect to the end of the world like it was nice seeing him realize that he deserves things in life this is kind of weird but I noticed it a couple of times and I feel like it's maybe just her writing style but they would be like these nonsensical add-ons to paragraphs I don't know how to explain like adages that like fully straight up didn't need to be there like I love some character context I love some character development leave me in their brain for as long as you want but there was some sentences and like paragraphs that I was like why why are we saying this the same way nine times on something that truly truly does not matter I wrote this one down because it was so weird to me do you want coffee yes I would have loved to offer him beer but it was 7 a.m I went to the kitchen where the coffee pot had been brewing the pot I just put on when I woke up this morning that was four sentences that could have been one like why did we say coffee pot four times I feel like for considering that this is like a 300 page romance we got a lot we got a lot of plot we got a lot of family we got a lot of like emotion in it like I feel like I was kind of expecting just like a spicy smutty little easy little read but there were a lot of metaphors there were a lot of self-growth there was a lot you could take from this book it was emotional which i wasn't anticipating but that's exactly how chestnut springs is for me i'm rooting for emmy and luke i care about them like they're real people i feel like a broken record that is just the only thing that i can say when i like really genuinely thinking and care about a couple is they're real people to me because they are i think about them like friends this was a pretty chaotic week of reading it was so hot reading in the heat i forgot how hard it was i'm not gonna complain about it again i know i complained about it a couple of times throughout this video because i was reading so much slower than normal it's fine i will say after reading these romances for a week i'm kind of getting back into my romance kick which i really really thought there was no world i really thought that i was like once i was in fantasy all winter i was like i just don't understand how i'm gonna go back to reading romances in the summer like but i love fantasies i'm it's just 
cutesy and enjoyable and fun and it takes so much less brain power I feel like I'm coming into a romance kit so if you have any romance books that you really would love to see me read or you just think that I would love please let me know because I mean I have a ton there's some in that stack that is not fitting in my bookshelf right now right there but I always want more recommendations so let me know what you guys think hope you guys enjoyed this video this absolute chaos I feel like I started off and then got progressively better at filming I always like I'm I get uncomfortable easily so I feel like it takes me a second to settle into filming in certain new locations social anxiety that's what that is i hope you have a great rest of your day thanks for spending some time with me and i'll see you in the next one love you bye